Hey, Megan, how's it going? Good. How are you, Graham? Doing good, doing good. So today we're talking, of course, Treasure Quest Snake Island, premiering tomorrow, second season, Friday, November 4th, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 Central Time. So my first question for you, uh, how did the whole show come about in the first place, and what what kind of enticed you to get involved in it? Well, uh, you know, let's see. I would have to say it really is my, my passion and drive for adventure. Mm-hmm. And um, I... I love having, you know, just being out right and, and like on the edge of your comfort zone and really pushing, you know, my personal limits and things like that. And when I can be out in the, you know, the jungle or out on the ocean or wherever that is and feel like um, and, and just feel that kind of being alive it really just taps into the core of who I am Mm -hmm. so you know I'm driven like an expedition like this for me is it's like a dream come true you know because I am so fascinated and passionate about maritime history and anthropology and archaeology and and you know I uh my expertise lies heavily in diving as well so like my you know all of my passions are kind of strung together by my diving so this really was a perfect match for me and so when I got the the call about um you know to see if I was interested in in checking out the team and and coming on board I I jumped at the chance did you ever think even kind of going through your out your career that a show about this kind of thing would ever be possible did you ever imagine anything like this ever coming to fruition you know, I, man, I, I guess in everything I do, I try not to play the, the what if game too much because, uh, you know, you, I, I always end up being, being wrong or, or, uh, ending up with the, with the wrong answer, you know? So mm-hmm. I just, I think the sky's the limit. Um, you know, it, 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 to me makes perfect sense. I mean, we're out there doing what we're doing. We're on this expedition, you know, braving the jungle and the wilds and the, you know, the remote areas and all the dangers that we encounter. And, we have the crew along that's just, you know, like documenting what we're doing. And, um, and uh, you know, living through it is, is fascinating and hair-raising and exciting and, and crazy and, and um, just very, it really forces you to live in the moment, you know. And so it's all those things while we're living through it. So it's not, it's not a stretch of the imagination to imagine that would be really exciting to watch for somebody at home, you know, that may not have, um, have that in, in their lineup of going to the jungle and treasure hunting and things like that. And so it, it's just really kind of a, it's big adventure, you know, from the right out of the gate. So it really is kind of a cool, unique concept. And you kind of described it right there. That's kind of what makes the show stand out, in my opinion, amongst everything else on Discovery Channel and everything else pretty much on television in general. Uh, is that something that you would say that you would ascribe to a casual fan or someone that has yet to watch the show, that that's a reason to watch? That's kind of what makes the show stand out amongst everything else on television right now? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I think Treasure Quest does stand out. And, you know, really, I think it has something for everybody it is, I, you know, I, I don't get to, see, I haven't seen the season yet, but, um, I, but I lived through it. And I have to say that, you know, I think that the team is very dynamic and we all have big personality and we have, you know, we're, we're very, um, some, some of us more than others, but, you know, we, we're all type A and hard headed and bring a lot to the table as far as our skill sets. And we're really a dynamic crew. And I think that comes through. So I think just, that in itself is very entertaining, but it's also a really smart show. And we have the history and, you know, the treasure of the Trinity, it just has this incredible past. And I think that they've done a really good job of keeping that science and that, that his, historical factor embedded in there, but in a really exciting and interesting way. And then, you know, we have the diving and we have the jungle trekking and we have all of the excitement and dangers that we encounter. So across the board, I think, yeah, the fact that we really truly have something for everybody makes Treasure Quest stand out amongst all the, you know, all the shows out there today. So It's interesting that you said you had yet to watch the season on TV and how it kind of plays out that way. Was that the case with season one, too? And are you going to be like sitting down on Friday night watching the show with everyone else in the world? Yes. Yes, and I'll be live tweeting. So <laughs> That's I'm super great. Excited. Yeah. No, I'm like it's it's crazy, you know, because 
it's the weirdest, um, the weirdest feeling. Like we go and we're working so hard, the whole team on, on, you know, this expedition that we're on and we get home and, and, you know, you know, in your head, like it was all documented, but we really, you know, mums the word. We, we can't talk anything about, we can't say anything about it. We can't talk about it. And then, and then, you know, we don't see it before it comes out. So it really is something that, you know, the, the guys and I on the team will really be experiencing it with, with everybody else who's, who's sitting down to enjoy it on Friday night. So, <laughs> so from that different perspective, yeah, that, that, that's pretty cool. That doesn't happen a lot. I'm surprised it didn't give you like an early viewing of the show or anything like that. Or did you choose not to? Or was it just the way they're kind of laid out like that? Oh, they like to keep us guessing, you know. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So that's still cool, though. That yeah, you get to watch yeah. it from like a fan perspective, though. Yeah, exactly. And you know, really, I mean, the the it, it's it, it's kind of cool. I mean, they did that for for the first run, uh, the first season as well. And so, mm-hmm. I guess it was what I was kind of expecting this time anyway. So it's. But it's, it, it does make it exciting, you know. I'm I'm literally going to be just watching it with everybody else, and and um, my reactions will be, you know, will be right along with everybody else's. So it'll be it'll be fun. Exactly, get those organic reactions. That's pretty great. So uh, of course you've had yeah. a, you've done a lot of cool things over the course of your career, being one of the original inductees into the Women's Divers Hall of Fame, and amongst a lot of other stuff. Uh, but what has meant more to you, kind of those accolades and achievements and stuff of that nature, or just kind of being more so of a role model for young women across the world? Oh, that's a really interesting question. You know, I'm being inducted in the Women Divers Hall of Fame and, and the accolades, like you say, are those are a huge honor. You know, I, I definitely wear those as, as a badge of honor and, and feel... Um, it, it's just incredible, you know, to be included in, you know, using that particular example, be included in a group of women like that, that I, you know, so many of them, I just are my role models and I admire so very much, like Dr. Sylvia Earle, for example. And, you know, but really for me, I, I think my my overall kind of inspiration and, and um, what is one of my major driving factors is my love of, of working with kids and and trying to lead by example if if I can for my own kids as well where you know I am following my passions and trying to uh, you know be true to to myself and who I am and what makes me feel alive and, and wake up in the morning and be excited to be in my world that I live in and you know, we only get so many trips around the sun, and I think that, you know, those those things are at the foundation of your happiness, and when I'm a happy person, I have so much to give to other people, and, um, you know, so if, as far as, you know, being a role model, first and foremost, for my kids, and putting, you know, hoping that, that I can fill in them when, when they have that decision to make, that they can make choices um, to support their happiness and to follow their dreams and be true to their heart, so... You know, I think that, um, I, I guess I would say that, you know, that coupled with my uh, interest in, in and passion for marine conservation are two of my big driving factors. And, you know, I've, I've spent, gosh, since I was in my late teens, I was working, <clears throat> excuse me, working with and mentoring young girls and um, just, you know, really kind of at that foundational level when, um, you know, when they're becoming teenagers and and you see that just statistically that big dip in self-esteem and just really trying to help build them up and Mm -hmm. and um i i work with uh i'm a new mentor with water women inc and it's basically uh encouraging and fostering that interest for young women in in science and being ocean stewards and things like that so it's it's all kind of wrapped together you know i mean Mm -hmm. the common thread through everything i do is the ocean and and my diving so so what was that experience like for you, kind of filming this latest season of the show compared to the first season? Was it kind of more like a run around like we already know what to expect? Or was it kind of like a completely different experience compared to that first season for you? Well, it, it definitely was a completely different experience just in the sense of the expedition itself. Yeah. Um, I think all of us were, you know, the whole team were, was uh, more accustomed to the crew following us around this time. <laughs> so that was a little bit more... Um, more laid back, which was really nice because I think that's going to translate into the show this time Mm -hmm. where everybody's bringing their person. There's like no filtering going on. Everybody's (laughs) full throttle. Their whole personalities, you know, Mm -hmm. and I mean, I got to tell you, 
we're like, we're, you know, after working together now in remote locations, life-threatening situations, all those things for so many months at a time together, I mean, we're like a big, weird kind of family, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, and that includes all the, the friction and, you know, everybody's annoying each other at certain times and you kind of go through those dynamics where when we reconverge, we have those, the, you know, the kind of the MO of, of forming the team back together of, of, uh, what does it go? It's, um, Foreman, Storman, and Norman. So first, you know, you're reforming the team, and then everybody's kind of, like, battling and trying to figure out, you know, like, mm-hmm. what annoys everybody else and all that. And then you kind of normalize, you know, and then everybody's just just cruising, and we're on the expedition. And, and, um, and it, you know, it's, it's something where, you know, we have that dynamic coming forward, and then the expedition itself is so absolutely different than the first season. Um in the sense that, you know, for, for season one, that first expedition we did together, we were on Snake Island, which is an incredibly dangerous and, you know, scary, beautiful place, but it was one geographic location for the most part that mm-hmm. we were on, and um, and we had our, our biggest main danger were the snakes, obviously, in the remote location. So we have all that this time. We have snakes, which are bigger and, you know, are, are more... Um, more feisty in the sense that they do have competition, so they have to fight for a living. And um, so we're dealing with snakes and the remote location, and it's just tenfold from there because we are all over the place. We are extremely remote. We're dealing with crazy um, water conditions. You know, that's that's in my wheelhouse. And mm-hmm. I had most of the time almost zero visibility dealing with fresh water in South America that, you know, you can't even see into the water. So, like, it's like, you know, biology soup as far as the microorganisms go. Mm -hmm. And that's scary anywhere in the world. But, you know, we were down in South America. And then on top of it, I'm dealing with, you know, some pretty um, toothy fauna in the water as well, like piranha and caiman. And uh, there's, you know, there's stingray and all that. And they can't see anything either. So, you know, they're following, uh, they, you know, they have better sensory systems than me. So they come to, like, investigate when there's, you know, a commotion in the water, i.e. me down there doing my search and discovery dive. So it was intense from the word go. And, um, you know, we did tons of diving. And then we had uh, just even the jungle treks. And, uh, you know, when we were out there on the expedition, we're out there for so long. And the terrain is so diverse and um we're just, yeah, I mean, we're really just sprawled out this time following these, you know, these clues. We did, I can say that we did have a very successful mission mm-hmm. this go-round. I can't, I'm not at liberty to say exactly what or mm-hmm. how much we found, but it will blow your mind. So it's, it's really, you know, there are some exciting things in store. I'm really excited to see how, you know, how, like, how they piece it all together because we're out there for so long, you know. Yeah. That um, we'd have to take over Discovery Channel for a year, I think, to you know get everything out there. <laughs> mm. <laughs> next next time around, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hopefully for season three, yeah, you guys can make it even longer and take over the entire channel for it all to kind of relay on television. Yeah. So of course, other right than the, on. <laughs> exactly, I hope we can get a petition for that going. Uh, but other than the expedition, I love it. <laughs> we'll start that ASAP as soon as we're done here. But uh, as soon as we, uh, or as you mentioned, rather, as you mentioned, so other than the expedition itself, what would you say are the biggest changes, maybe even format-wise, uh, between season one and season two? I mean, you said maybe more unfiltering, maybe in terms of how the show uh, how the show was filmed or the formatting. Was there anything about the first season that, that was so successful, like maybe we'll change it, or if it isn't broken, we won't fix it kind of thing, or don't fix it kind of thing? I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I really think that the biggest change is going to be just the, you know, the personalities coming through mm-hmm. and, the, you know, the, the lack of filter, if you will, you know, that, that everybody had this time around. And, you know, which I think is really, is, is going to be really interesting because it's a great group of people with really interesting backgrounds, uh, you know, and very diverse personalities in their own right. So, and I think, you know, that, like I said, that the terrain and so is so different this time and, so the photography is going to be very um, different than last time as well and, and very beautiful. And I think, too, that 
You know, this this treasure has a very sort as most treasures do, um, have very has a very sordid past with a lot of battling and a lot of bloodshed uh, throughout the course of history. And you know, people have lived and you know fought their whole life looking for this treasure and died trying. And there are times, things that we encounter this time uh, that really had us all at different times scratching our heads going, okay, you know, is this, is this really worth it? I mean, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, am I, because, you know, you, you just start wondering, you're like, okay, so now I'm at risk of becoming, uh, you know, another statistic to fall at the, at the hands of the treasure of the Trinity. I mean, it's, it, there's some spooky stuff that we encounter this time, um, for sure. And some, some of the team members are more suspicious than others about, you know, kind of the, a lot of people talk about the curse of the treasure of the Trinity because of the bloodshed that has happened, historically speaking, um, you know, surrounding this treasure. Uh, but, yeah, so there, so that angle, I think, is definitely probably going to come through a lot more this time because of the, because of kind of the creepy and unusual things that we were encountering. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, so it should be fun for fans to look forward to something different. And uh, just the expedition itself, of course, is going to be drastically different. Very exciting. So uh, last question for you before we wrap it up here. Any hints? I mean, otherwise, I mean, like you said before, you can't, you're can't. you not at liberty to spoil anything. I'm not expecting you to. But any hints that you can provide as to what viewers can expect throughout Season 2 of Treasure Quest? Yeah, for sure. Well, um, I think that uh, there's a few, there, there's a handful of rescues that take place. Uh, this season, and um, that, you know, I, well, I know just from, you know, the sneak peek that I've gotten to see as well, that we they start off with one of our finds, which is like one of the finds that, you know, that's kind of when we end up reuniting mm-hmm. uh, the team, because we've all been working in different elements of this, but we had lives to get back to and stuff, so we were kind of jumping in and out as time went on, and then when we got this find, we reconvened. Um and that's when, you know, the viewer is, is coming along for the ride. So I think that, you know, the, the diversity of that will come through and the amazing photography as well as the dangers are a lot more diverse this time, which, you know, it was crazy when we were there going through it, you know, risking our necks trying to make it out alive. But I think it'll make for, uh, for some pretty interesting hair-raising and fun, fun viewing, <laughs> for sure, <laughs> at our expense, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I think that, and then and then the real, true, big personalities of everybody coming through. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, just to keep our our sanity when we're out there. There's a lot of banter, you know, going back and forth and jokes and pranks and stuff like that. And that's kind of how when when we're going through these situations that we keep keep sane, you know. Mm-hmm. And so um, yeah, so I think all those things kind of mesh together are going to be a lot more diverse and and really raising the bar this time around for Treasure Quest. Fantastic. So like I said at the start, uh, people can check out the show Treasure Quest Friday, tomorrow, November 4th, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 Central, only on the Discovery Channel. Megan, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. No problem. Have a good day. Thanks.